One line out there, I know. <laughs> uh, well, no, as George always said, uh, George was going to direct most of the last ones, the new ones, uh, the year that uh, he was killed. Uh, the director called and said, hey, no, we got the 26 more scripts from New York. The comic book people in New York wrote all their scripts and just sent them out here. And um, he said, um, oh, and I said, well, gosh, you know, it's going to be kind of hard. You know, what are they going to do with this new episode? But um, I don't know. I just don't remember most of them. Somebody remembered once that uh, on that Tuma Zaharan, when he picks me up and takes me out of the out of the temple and drops me in the sand to go back for Jack. And of course, my head goes. <laughs> I hit the, I have to play it again to hear the cheek. But um, no, I just um, oh he he always said no. He said don't worry about the dialogue in any of these scripts because he said the scripts are all the same. Just. <laughs> Just the names of the heavies are changed. <laughs> so I thought, oh, oh, very clever, very clever. Robert Shane told me you can only say, take them away, boys, in so many different inflections. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Oh, yeah, that was wonderful. No, yes, sir. Did. Yes. Yes, Ms. Neal, I, uh, I think you and uh, George Reese went on the road with the musical show later on. Yes. Can you tell us something about that? Well, it was kind of a shame about that. Uh, George was very talented. He uh, spoke, um, he was, uh, I hate being Mexican like a native, and um, he sang very well, played the bass. And so he called me one day, he said, hi, Noel. I said, oh, hi, George, how are you? Fine. He said, how long has it been since you've sung sober? <laughs> <laughs> about that one. <laughs> George's agent supposedly had booked George and his little group. We had to see four little musicians, and Nadi Basio on the guitar, of course, he and his family were very good friends of George, and um, had a telephone and a drummer, and whatever, and myself. And uh, Nadi and I did a little harabi tapatio, which of course was a Mexican dancer, dancer on the big hat, and um, I had to teach him how, that was pretty funny. <laughs> but anyway, um, we left, and according to his agent, we were booked in different cities, and we had two, oh, Jean LaBelle went to, of course, who was the uh, Chu Chu Chu, the uh, Taught George the wrestling moves, yes, and right. he played Mr. Kryptonite. He wore a black right. outfit yeah. with Mr. Kryptonite across his right. chest. Right, bless his heart. Yeah. So that way we went two cars and all the instruments and the luggage and stuff, and we went to a couple of shows. We did one fair that was fine, and then the last show we did, opened up the curtains, looked out in the audience, with three people: mother, father, and the little boy. But we did we did our whole show there, and we got through. And George said, "Okay, pack everything up. We're going home." <laughs> so it was, it was really a shame because it was a good little little show. And George financed it, of course. And then um, I got home. And I said to George, "No money. I know you put a lot into this, and." No reason why you should pay any salaries, and he said, "Don't oh, thank you very much," and he didn't. But um, it was kind of a shame because he was a good singer. But I talked to George one day, and I said, "George, you know, you sing in Spanish, Mexican, and uh, uh, you could do one line you know, in that, and then I could do the same line, only interpret it for you in English." And we do that, and several of. Uh, Groups have done that since then, of course. But she said, "Gee, it's sort of a good idea. We'll have to do it." But of course, it didn't happen. But whatever. If you want to see, uh, see and hear George Reeves on film singing, check out Argentine Nights if you find it on your late night cable. It's not on, but he uh, plays a Mexican bandit, and he does sing. Oh, a, does he? He does sing "Amigos, We Go Riding Tonight" in Spanish and English. Oh, really? So with the rear screen projection and the fake horse, but it's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You have some more questions? Yes. Yes, sir. You often hear actors who play doctors say that they inspired people to grow up to become a doctor. And I wonder if you've heard from 
young women who were inspired to go into journalism. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, very flattered on that when I was doing college shows. I, you know, of course, had a lot of the younger people, and um, many of the girls said, "Oh gosh, you know, now that you are here and we see you on the screen, having joined the, the men's club," <laughs> and uh, so they, many of them, I've heard later on, grew up. They got into writing, in the newspaper work, and television work. And uh, that's very flattering. And I said, gosh, the show really did something good. <laughs> but so I've really... entertained the heck out of them for the last six years. <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Yes, and Stranger in the back. That's Jerry Beck, by the way, cartoonresearch.com. Check it out. Right. Well, and I oh yes, it's oh, scripts are the size reading. of a phone book too, and <laughs> yeah, right. a hundred and some setups a day. Oh, you know what? I heard a good thing about John Hamilton. I mean, as we found out, we at the end of it, each show, every twenty-six shows, we would have a couple of weeks just to do the office stuff. You know, we'd go in and see the chief and whatever, and so we'd stand out in the halls with our little pages of whatever seat we were in. And uh, Jack would be in one place, I'd be in another, and George would be in another. So we were ready to go into the office. And we often wondered how John always knew all his stuff. And here we were, three, stumbling and bumbling around. But the, what we suddenly realized that he had, of course, his big desk was a, was a little messy. And he had all his dialogue on the, on the desk. <laughs> yeah, you so watch Amazon. Said, oh, go, now listen here. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> he did it much more professional oh, than that. But, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, I, it, it's, as far as the serials with Kirk Allen now, it, it was 15 chapters, right. almost four and a half hours right. running time. How right. long did it take you to film that from beginning to end, that entire serial? Well, that's well those were quick. Serials lasted about a week or two, and um, of course, to me, they were like being in a western. So all the men you know, were off, off and away and away, and I was sitting there waiting for everybody to come home and whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, a funny thing. They always said when you get a, a script from your agent that you're going to do a western, you go to a studio, you go in the gate, go into the makeup department, into the hairdressing and the costumes, and got. You know, a little dress and a little bonnet and whatever. Kiss the course and go home. <laughs> oh, yeah, they were fun. A lot of horses. Yeah. Oh, they were fun. Any more well, questions? I got tons of stories. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes. Oh, with Ben Affleck. Who didn't Welcome to the club. We're forming a club online. <laughs> <laughs> Problems with Hollywoodland.com. Yeah. First of all, there was no, no scene of joy at all. There was no, no joy at all. Oh, well, yep. Mm -hmm. Anyway, but I noticed that you weren't depicted at all on any of the interviews. Well, I don't know. We met at um, one of the conventions, the writer and his wife and had dinner with him and he said um, that he had scenes for me in the show. But the thing is, I was still alive. <laughs> you, see, you see, all those people in that show were dead. So if you didn't like what they did, you couldn't sue them. So George was dead and his lady friend and her husband. And, you know, everybody just, so that's kind of the why, but um, I was so disappointed because uh, they said, Ben said, you know, he gained weight and everything, and buckled bolt up to be like Superman. Well, George wasn't that way, and of course, George was such a gentleman, such a sweet person that um, it'd be you know, pretty hard to copy. But, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's picking of the, the happy things that they ever do, you know, correctly, even a documentary. You know, um, Jack Larson told me that George loved to crack cast up before takes. That was his big goal in life. 
So he said that whenever they, especially whenever Noel and Jack were tied to a chair or tied <coughs> wherever, George would always, right before they'd say action, he'd lean around the corner of wherever he was coming in and he'd go, Super Boo's gonna rescue you. <laughs> and Jack Larson said he constantly had to look frightened and want to laugh every single take. Yeah. So you yeah. see an unusual expression, that's pretty much it. So. Yeah. Jack is just fine. He's still alive, still around. And we're neighbors out in California. And uh, I see him quite a bit. And we do occasionally we have to do a little interview together. So we go down to Patrick's and... Yes, yeah, sir, you had a question. Yeah, I just wondered, you know, um, when you watch the old serials, you know, you, there was a sense of wonder and, and naivety. And every, every show ended in a big bang and you had to come back next time. Nowadays, when you watch Smallville and stuff like that, it's mm -hmm. kind of the same, but not. Do you think we've lost something in the transition from from the serials to what we have these days? Well, I'd say we lost a lot of salary. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> I refer to Smallville as the Flash and Plath because. Uh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just really tired of not seeing Superman. I gave up quite a ways into the show, so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that. It's interesting. People say, why do people still like the show? I mean, many people say to me, gosh, I wish they'd, why can't they make shows like Superman anymore for the family? You know, because um, fathers and grandfathers always have kids by the hand, come on, watch Superman. And, uh, but um, it's just not to be. I think the quality of the show itself stands the test of time because so many shows are forgotten. Mm -hmm. And this show just keeps on going. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you have great craftsmen and people that cared, and, uh, and my gosh, George Reed, you know? Oh, yeah, we had a lot of, um, like the, um, the directors, some of them were award winners, and uh, of course, our special effect, effects man was so wonderful and so wonderful. And I ran into him once after he, we'd finished production, of course. And I said, well, you know, what are you doing now? As I know he's very wanted because he was so good. And he said, oh, he said, um, my wife and I have this boat, and we're just, you know, going traveling. So he whipped out this picture, and I thought it was a picture of the Queen Mary or something. <laughs> so I guess he did all right, but. Um... <laughs> we have time for one more question. Yes. This, this lady here has been waiting patiently. Well, Kirk was um, not a movie person. He was from New York. He'd been a dancer there, a ballet dancer. And that's why he was kind of good with those you know, leaps and bounds and jumping out and whatever. But he just, um, you know, wasn't as, uh, forgive me, wasn't as talented as George, who studied being an actor and whatever. But um, Kirk was a nice person. And uh, then later on, of course, he went to doing convention. He did another show. Uh, another series, and it was quite good for uh, the Westerns. But, that's so <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll join me in giving uh, Noel a big round of applause. <laughs> <laughs>